Now to Gaza, where the Hamas-run health ministry says 87 people have been either killed or are missing after an Israeli airstrike in northern Gaza on Saturday. It's one of the highest death tolls in a single attack in months. The UN has condemned the strike. Gaza's authorities say two of the Strip's remaining three hospitals were also hit. Israel has intensified its military operations in northern Gaza and says it's targeting Hamas militants. Let's bring in James Elder. He is the UNICEF Chief of Communications and was in Gaza recently. He joins us now from Geneva. James, uh, welcome to DW. Um, we are seeing footage showing that there are several children among those killed and injured in Israel's strike. Um, what is the situation on the ground for families in northern Gaza right now? Utterly horrific. It's they, they have a seemingly a cruel choice, Mariana, between you know endure deprivation because we cannot get aid into the north. It is a tiny fraction of what it was. I think 80 trucks have been allowed into the north since the 2nd of October versus nearly 500 at the same time in September. So there is a great lack of the most basic essentials people need. At the same time, if it's not deprivation, it's displacement. But people are being killed as they flee and they know that to try and get to the south, they know what that looks like. They know the south is unlivable. The South is, is families crammed, crammed into tents, a lack of water, it, winter is coming, uh, hospitals, as you said there, Friday hospitals in the north were struck. So, and Mariana, it was a full year ago almost that UNICEF spoke about, you know, this being the worst place in the world for children. It has simply continued for a year. Yes, though, in the last couple of weeks, we do seem to have hit a whole new level of ferocity of attacks, continued false displacement, continued and obstructions of aid, particularly though for those families in the north. I want to ask you about those reports on hospitals being hit and also running out of fuel and medical supplies. What have you been hearing from people on the ground? Oh, look, it, it's go so many times hospitals have been hit, but yes, there are now only three semi-functional hospitals in all, the, in all of the north of Gaza. We have to remember that. There are now only three. Yes, two of those would suffer direct hits on Friday. They've been asked to forcibly evacuate. World Health Organization had eight successive missions to go and evacuate patients denied. Eight successive missions denied, even though they're told to evacuate. You have patients with life-threatening either children with wounds of war or old people with cancer. Um, so those hospitals are a lifeline, but they are under siege. And it was only a week ago, Mariana, that uh, a hospital in the middle area, if you imagine Gaza in three parts in the middle, a hospital I know very well, Al-Aqsa Hospital, I was there a couple of weeks ago, still now after a year, just the sheer number of children with the wounds of war. I mean, here's shrapnel, I mean amputations, I mean horrendous trauma wounds to the head. They're, they're on floors, they're in corridors because... The severity of the attacks has not dissipated and, and hospitals simply don't have a coping capacity. That hospital, al a week ago, the hospital grounds were struck where people who had been forced to flee from the north found themselves and suddenly in an inferno of tents, killing more people. So it, it does become difficult to describe what people are, are now enduring after a year. The key thing is, of course, after a year, psychologically, Mariana and Physically, they've been absolutely shattered. They're just holding on. And now at a time where we have forced displacement and more restrictions on aid, we are going to see more and more children killed, adding to whatever insane numbers, I think around 14,000 girls and boys now reportedly killed. That was James Elder, UNICEF Chief of Communications. We thank you so much for your time.